Hello and welcome to the Hidden Rugby Crisis brought to you by Driving Mall and I'm Paul, the guy behind Driving Mall. Thank you so much for joining me. By the way, here is the mug. Don't worry, it hasn't gone away. I know some of you um, have been asking where has my mug gone, but there you go. It's still around. It was just in the wash. Um, so there's lots of talk, obviously, about the problems in Australia. There's been lots of talk previously about the problems in South Africa. Uh, I think what a lot of people aren't aware of, though, are the problems that are in New Zealand. The New Zealand Rugby Union like to paint New Zealand as being this rugby mad nation uh, that has a stadium of four million people um, and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, and yes, rugby is big news here. Um, the All Blacks are the only game in town when it comes to a marketing perspective. But things are not all looking rosy over here. Uh, it's not all on the up. In fact, rugby uh, watching, rugby viewing is on the down. So I'm going to cover three areas in this where I think we have problems. Uh, Super Rugby, the All Blacks and also the Mitre 10 Cup. Let's start off with Super Rugby then. The problems of Super Rugby, we've seen the attendances are definitely down. Uh, when I go along to Eden Park to watch a Blues game, um, I have my, my pick of seats. Um, the, the ground is uh, at best um, a third uh, full uh, and there's, um, there's lots of um, spaces there. This is the ground that used to get packed out for MPC Auckland games, never mind Super Rugby games. Uh, so, um, and TV viewers are also down. This is why Super Rugby is going through its restructures because they realise that the current structure isn't good for TV um, and they're worried about the next round of TV negotiations. Now the problem is they've sent South Africa up to Europe but that's a secondary issue uh, at the moment. All we have to do is look at um, the, uh, the finals of Super Rugby, um, the Crusaders hosting their quarter final. Now there were severe weather warnings um, around then. It was very cold um, down in Christchurch but they still um, had a very poor turnout um, for that. And we're talking about finals games here, not, um, not, not uh, walkover games um, against like the Sunwolves or something. We're talking um, proper uh, meaningful games. So there's some serious problems here uh, for, for rugby New Zealand um, around how many people are watching the game. If we look in the UK, uh, England, England, and I've seen some of, the, some of the Pro 14 numbers as well, uh, their viewers or their attendances are on the, are on the up. Sure, some of the Pro 12 ones aren't, or some of the ones in, uh, perhaps are not back up to their peak, but they're on the rise. They're not, um, they're not on the way down, whereas they're definitely on the way down, um, down south. So everyone says, OK, but everything's fine with the All Blacks, surely they still are a big draw card. No, not really. It's not all fine there either. Uh, last weekend over in Sydney, they had the lowest uh, uh, Bledisloe Cup attendance in uh, Sydney for a Bledisloe Cup. Um, I've seen adverts this week for tickets for sale for the Bledisloe Cup this weekend down in Dunedin. That's not a big stadium, and yet they've still got tickets available. You think about Twickenham, you try and get a ticket to a Six Nations game at Twickenham, it's impossible. They're sold out straight away. Here we are, the equivalent game in, the, in New Zealand, and the week before the game, you can still get tickets to watch New Zealand versus Australia for Bledisloe Cup 2. I got a ticket for the um, Chiefs versus the Lions, the British and Irish Lions, uh, relatively late on. Uh, it was eventually a sellout, but it took a long time. It was only sold out about a week or so before. So uh, these, ticket, these games, the ticket sales are not great. Uh, the All Blacks are playing the Springboks uh, in Auckland. They're not playing at Eden Park. They're playing on the North Shore um, at, at um, a smaller stadium. And still, they're having to advertise the tickets. It's not selling out. So, um, yeah, interest in New Zealand for rugby is definitely on the down. Um, if we look at the Knights 10 Cup um, to show you those levels, uh, that, um, again, those, those, those stadiums are pretty much empty. Uh, they'll only open up a quarter of Eden Park, if that, um, for the Knights 10 Cup. Uh, and if I want to go to this weekend's opening game uh, for Auckland, uh, I will get a free dinner. The first 500 members... Um, will get free dinners if they turn up to the game. Can, do you understand? That's crazy. You're having to try and encourage season ticket holders to go to games. 
it's that that's got to that kind of stage. Uh, as, as an Auckland member, I get um, tickets to the All Blacks games at Eden Park, the Super Rugby games at Eden Park, and also the, um, and also the Mighty 10 Cup games at Eden Park. Uh, and they don't even think the people with their season tickets for uh, Mighty 10 will actually turn up to Auckland games. It's got to that kind of level. So the, uh, a, lot, a lot of this is, is, is obviously covered up by the fact that on the pitch, uh, the New Zealand rugby teams are doing great. Uh, clearly, they've won the super, three different sides, won the Super Rugby final um, for the past three, past three years, um, and they have been the pace setters in that competition. The All Blacks are the most successful team uh, results-wise um, in the world. Um, so clearly, on those levels, rugby is absolutely healthy in New Zealand. It's on, the, it's, it's on who's going to be paying those players, i.e. the audience, where the problem is. And that's why you see uh, uh, New Zealand rugby getting more and more international um, sponsors that they can because they realise that the New Zealand market is diminishing. Uh, it's, not, um, it's not going to sustain them. So they have to sell that brand abroad to bring in the cash to try and keep hold of the players because they don't have that cash or those players will go to Europe and then uh, we're going to see standards drop pretty quick. Um, it's also interesting that when we talk about New Zealand rugby, they are aware that they need to keep in front of the New Zealand audience. So one of their most important sponsorships they talk about is with Wheat Bix. Uh, not Wheat Abix, but Wheat Bix uh, breakfast cereal down here in New Zealand because uh, it's one of the most popular, wheat, it's one of the most popular uh, uh, breakfast cereals and is on most families' tables each day of the week. So they, people get to see an all black on the outside of the, of the box of cereals. And that's important because uh, the, most of the rugby has moved to pay TV. Um, also, most of the rugby now is in the evenings at 7 p.m. Uh, and I don't know about your kids, but my kids are in bed by then. They're not watching uh, the All Blacks play anymore. They're not watching the Blues play because those games are on too late for them to watch it. So uh, the New Zealand kids aren't growing up with rugby around them all the time because it's just it's on too late and they're in bed. So these are, that's though, though these are all important matters, uh, and rugby is definitely as, um, as as an entertainment medium on the down here in New Zealand, um, much as we've seen lots of people paint it as being, um, a, say, a stadium of 4 million people. And this is going to be a problem um, going forward if New Zealand rugby can't fight the battle. So uh, always up for good rugby chats. Please do let me know your thoughts on this. Is New Zealand rugby uh, heading into a crisis? Um, also, don't miss any of my videos, uh, articles or etc. covering uh, Super Rugby, International Rugby, Viva Premiership, Pro 12, Pro, top four, oh, sorry, Pro 14, uh, Top 14. Um, yep, I cover all of that kind of stuff as well as opinions about what is going on in the world of rugby. So do check out, um, do, do sign up for my newsletter, link above on Twitter, down below on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining me. The next two videos are going to be my Pro uh, 14 uh, season preview and my Viva, Viva Premiership um, season preview. I'll also be doing post live post-game reaction to the Blensler Cup 2, New Zealand versus Australia. So um, check out YouTube for that straight after the game. Um, and also I'm going to see if I can do the same thing for the Pumas versus the Springboks. So again, check out YouTube straight after the game for that as well. Thank you very much for watching. Please do share with your friends. Give it the old thumbs up and all of that kind of stuff on YouTube. Um, I really do appreciate it.